Now in the background, I have two menus stacked up in my WordPress menu section, and you can actually see that these are two different menus. So I want to be able to choose a particular menu at my will inside here. So that's the next part that we're going to deal with inside our development. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want us to continue building our project where we're making a custom elemental widget that displays dynamic menus from inside our WordPress install. Now, right now you can see that this is a bit painful to see, but we shall fix that because we use demo colors for this, but we shall be able to fix that and have it look a little better. Now, a few things have changed since the last time we looked at this, and that is I've gone inside my plugin section and I've updated to the latest Elementor so that we make our plugin or our add-on and extension compatible with the latest versions of Elementor. And as you can see in the edit page right now, the Elementor screen looks much cleaner and still we are able to get our widget working when we reload, when we update, it's all working well. Now the next step to this is we are going to change so that we don't have a static menu showing up, but we have different menus showing up. So we're going to add here another option that will allow us to choose the particular menu that we want to have. If this is a video of interest to you, please stick around and if it isn't, then look around the rest of the catalog to see if something interests you. Let's go back to our code and then let's clean up before we continue any kind of development. So the first thing that I'm going to do is look through my code to make sure that everything is looking good, but our editor is starting to catch up on some issues here where we have a deprecated method from our class. Now in here we are extending this particular class which is the widgets manager, but as you can see the method that we were calling the register widget type is now actually deprecated and if you have good documented code this is a place where you can find some of the help that will help you fix this. Now in this particular case we're going to have to use the register method instead of the register widget type and it will still give us the right call that we need. So I'm going to change this and just take away the underscore widget underscore type and you will see that when I hover over this we still get the widget base as a class which we are extending inside our nav menu. If we go to our nav menu class you're going to see that we're actually extending widget base and that is the same thing that we wanted to get in here. So this is going to work well. I'm going to save this. Let us reload our page so that we can test it out and you'll see that in the edit part we're actually good. I can drop a new menu, update and reload and we don't have any errors and even on the front page we're going to be able to see our two menus showing up. So that's the first step of cleanup and if you're having some issues fixing your widget, in the previous video I showed you how you can also deal with the other aspects of upgrading your widget if there are changes in Elementor itself. I'm going to go to our editor and I'm going to look for the wp-config file which should be at the root or at the base of your WordPress install. And I'm going to turn on three different constants. One is the WP debug log and the other is the display to show me if there are any issues. And I'm going to change all of these to true so that if we get any errors they should be able to show up inside our WP content folder and then we shall see a new file which is going to be called the debug log. So if I quickly go back to look at this and I reload this page and reload this one, if we go back into our editor we should be able to see no debug log showing up because we don't have any issues whatsoever, which is good. So let's continue developing our extension. I'll go inside our assets and I'm going to just do a quick cleanup to make sure that we don't have an ISO. I'm going to make this a light blue and then I'll change this color to a black and I'll hit save right here so that when we go to preview our demo we can actually see that things are a little bit easier to see, not so hard as it was before. Now let's go and add some controls and settings inside our Elementor widget 
I'm going to close this because we don't need it anymore so that when we click on our widget to edit it we actually have more options like what you see here with our widget. Right now we have the advanced which comes by default with any new custom widget if you're developing in the newer versions and we need to add one of content and we shall add another one of style if we think that's the best way to go about this. But as you can see you can pretty much do a lot of styling with these controls that are here. So I'll show you how to plug in with those as well in the near future. But first let's add our content setting right here so that we can be able to change and have different menus. Now in the background I have two menus stacked up in my WordPress menu section and you can actually see that these are two different menus. So I want to be able to choose a particular menu at my will inside here. In order to have the menu change we need to go back to our code. So I'm going to go back to my editor and inside our editor I'm going to go out to our widgets and I'll look for the nav dash menu in here. And the part that we are looking for is this WP nav menu that we have here. Inside this array we can add a menu item that requires us to have let's say the menu ID or the slug in any particular case. So let's say I use the top menu in this section. I'm going to copy this of course adding a comma so that we don't have an error and I'll paste it here. So if I save this come back to review and reload you'll see that we have this menu it's the one now that's showing up. But if we were to go and look for the demo 2 menu, so let me go back to our editor and I'm going to change from tab menu to the demo dash 22 which is II. I'll then open up our site and I reload this. You'll see that now we have demo 2 starting up then the home and so on just like what we have here. So when we are making that part that should be editable in our content area here we need to have the different menus showing up. So let me go back to our editor and in this section I'm going to go to the register control. In the recent changes this is no longer underscore register control but it is register controls as the new method. And when you hover over this in your editor you'll see it says it's used to add new controls of any type. For example external developers can use this method to register controls. So you can have your own particular controls that you want to have. Let's say you've created a new one or you can register the ones that come by default to Elementor. In our particular case I want us to use the select but before we start using the select element we're going to do this first. We're going to say we are calling this class and because I have github copilot showing up here it's giving us all the different hints. It's a nice thing to have but I'm going to skip all of that. I'm going to say let's start using the start control section. So in the start control section we're going to register a new control section and we're going to call this the menu selection. And inside this after adding our ID for that unique section we can then now add an array that will require us to have a label and then it's also going to require us to add the kind of control manager that we want to have. So I'm just going to allow this to work with github copilot so that we can see this. So we have a label which is called the menu selection and the tab is going to be the tab content type. So let's save this, let's go and preview uh, what we have so far. So if I come back and reload this we're going to click on this edit and now you see we have this new section showing up to have the menu selection and we have no kind of control settings in here because we haven't added them yet but you can actually see that there are other options that we can have. So I'm going to go back to the code and show you that we can actually have another control but before we start a new control like this we have to actually end. So we're going to say this end control section because at that point we want to stop that section and we want to create a new one. So I'll duplicate what we have here and then instead of the tab content tab underscore style which will allow us to have like a styling kind of thing. Menu selection style will be its ID 
because IDs are unique wherever we need to have them and these should be registered with underscores to make it unique in PHP and then we can say menu style. I'll save this and then when we come back to preview, I'll reload this and when we click on our editor you'll see that now we have content, style and advanced similar to like any other widget that we can have. So let's say we dropped the heading in here you'll see we have our content, we have our style and then we have our advanced section. So now we are ready to do more stuff with what we want to have here. So I'm going to just take this away because it's now becoming a distraction and we shall continue building for the content section of our menu widget. So let's go back to our code and I'll comment this out because we don't need it yet and I'll say if we need to add a style section and comment this. Now let's go back to this section and in between our starting of the control section and our ending we want to add a select type of control and you will see that github copilot is telling me so this is a nice way to use AI to help you with what you're doing and it will help us fix that immediately. So basically we say let's call this class which is extending the widget base and we want to add a control. Now inside the control we need to have an ID and then we need to pass an array of arguments. The array of arguments we have, we have the label, we have the type and then we have the options whereby the options that we're going to give this control menu are going to be passed by a new method which we're calling get menus. This particular method I need to register right now because my editor is screaming that it doesn't exist. So let's just do that quickly and I'll say this is going to be a private function or a private method because we don't want it escaping and being used outside and again github copilot is doing very crazy things for me but right now I'm going to help you go through the code. So in this particular method we shall get our menus by using the wp get nav menus and we instantiate an empty array of a menu kind of list. And after having this mail, we return this mail list before we do anything to it. Okay? So we have this, we have this mail list, and we have this empty list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first add some quick things. So I'm going to say the ID, we're going to say let's have demo ii, which is going to give us our demo to ii. And then we're also going to have the top menu which will give us our top menu um, menu right now. So this is not dynamic in nature, I'm just adding it because I already know the IDs. If I go here you'll see that this method is now available for use and if I go back to the previous section and I reload this if I click on the editor you're going to see that now we have a select menu here and we have two options. We have the demo two and we have the top menu. Now it's not helpful for us to actually have these menus when they are just added. What if this widget is used on another site where we don't know the IDs? What if we want to change the IDs in the back end? Then we need to have these dynamically generated. So if we go back to our editor, I'm going to remove these and I want to see what we have in the menus. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to error log this and inside the error log I want us to print underscore r, we should print the menus and we'll add true as an argument so that when we reload this actually gets registered in our debug log right here. So I'm going to clean all of this out and I'll come back here. I'm going to hit update and if we go back to our error log you'll see that we have two items in our array. 
So we have the first item, which is an object, and whereby we can get the name or the slug that we need. So we basically have to loop through this array of items, and then inside that we can get the slug. So I'm going to come back to our nav dash menu, comment this out, and we'll say every time we get the menus, so for each one of those menus, let's get each array to become just one object that we need. So we are saying get this item from this array, get this item from the array. And then what I need to get at this particular moment is I'm going to get the slug and I'm also going to get the name, which is more friendly to the eye. So the first thing here is add the slug and you can see AI has its own faults. Um, sometimes it doesn't give you what you exactly need, but you can be able to read, it helps you code faster and you can see what you need. So I'm going to stop error logging and then we shall pass in our slug, we shall pass in our name. Let me go back to the preview. Right now we had top menu and demo menu. I'll reload this and you see when we come to our edit, we have our top menu and we have our demo. So let me update this so that when we reload here, you will see that we have our demo showing up and even here what is saved is our demo. So brilliant, we have this actually working right the way we need it to. I'll change this to top menu, I'll update and on reload, you're actually going to see that when we click edit, we have the top menu showing up and the demo to menu is still showing up because we have not fixed some of those things in the back end. And if I reload the home page, you'll see that's the same thing that's showing up. So back to our code again, after we get our menus, these are going to be the options. You might ask me how I'm getting all this information and that is simply because I am able to read the developer's documentation. So I'm going to take you to the documentation in Elementor and I'm going to open up this page which is basically for the add-ons. And you can get this from developers.elementor.com slash docs slash add-ons. And in here, we want to be able to get some controls. So I'll click on the controls area and in here you can see how you can create a control or how you can use it. And there are some examples that you can actually see that are helpful for you to learn this a little better. But right now I want to search for the select control and when I click on the select control, you'll see that they give us an example here of how we can actually use it. So we have a type, we have a label, we have a description, we can also show the label. So let's basically go through each one of these to see what it looks like. So we have the label, we have the type, we have the options. If we are to compare with what we have, we have the label, we have the type, and we have the options right here, which is requiring us to pass an array. We need to add a default. So I'm going to go back to our code and add a default. We don't want to hard code this in here. So for our default, we actually want to be able to get what we get from this get menus, but we want to get the first item and only get its key. Now that can be tricky if you want to use the same function, but I'm going to say let's get a default. So I'll say let's add a private method and say get default slug. And what we're going to do is call this function, which is get menus. So we'll just use the same thing. We'll say menu is going to equal to this and we want to get our get menus. The thing we want to do is return the key of the menu. The key function is something that you can find in PHP if you want to understand what it does. You can see that it was in PHP 4, 5, 7 and 8 and all it does is return the index element of the current array position. So in our example here you see that when we have an array and we just want to return the key, you're going to see it's going to give us fruit one and that is what we actually need. So I'll go back to our code, I'm going to open up our editor, save this and say we need our default slug and we need to pass it here. So we'll say this dash default slug 
save this let's come back to our preview and i'm going to reload this i'll delete this so that we can be able to see the new item hit update reload again let's drag and drop our widget in here and you will see that it gives us demo 2 as the first item and that means it's default so this is different from before where we had to first click and select something now we have a default item showing up so i'll hit save on this and we can now compare to see more options that we have here we can have the label block whereby we display the label in a separate line so essentially that means we'll have this on top and then we'll have this at the bottom and i'll just show you this so we'll have our label block i'll add this and say let this be true add a comma so that that doesn't break and when we come back to review this and reload you'll see that every time we go to edit this we have this on top and we have this at the bottom so if you have longer menu names then it would be easy for you to just use that kind of thing and right now for me this doesn't look so great so i can actually go back and just pass in the default which is false and keep that the way it's supposed to be the next part of our task is to make sure that when we are editing our menu and we change to top menu then this should be top menu we don't want it to remain static like what we have here so i'll come back to our code i'll scroll down to our render part and our template now in our code here we can get the settings and the settings we can get a this get settings for display method this method is already available for us and we can use it by passing a key to it but before we do that i just want us to error log we want to error log and print the settings i'll clean up my debug log so that we have something new to start with and essentially just go back to the page reload it and then all we need to do is come here and then choose demo click top menu and let's go and see what's happening in our debug log and you will see in here the first thing that happens is we have the menu and we have top menu and we have a bunch of other settings that we might not need right now so all we need to do is get the menu and that's the id that we need i'll come back to our nav dash menu and say we need to get the settings at this point and we need to look for the menu item so i'll copy this and i'll do the same right here i'll stop the error log let's save this and go back to our preview i'm going to reload this so that we can see what actually happens so if you go here you'll see that we have top menu if i change this to demo you'll see that this is broken but i'm going to just update it for now so that when we reload you'll see that now we have demo to showing up with regards to the error that we are having right here our error log tells us that there is an undefined variable called settings and that is because in this particular method which now is actually just content template without the underscore that's a fix we need to do for newer elementor you'll find that this settings is not anywhere described the easiest way would have been having this equal to an empty array and then eventually call it so you see the editor stops screaming but that's not going to work because we need the settings menu that's coming from here so i'm going to do a little bit of object oriented programming in here and introduce a private display menu id now after adding this here as a private id we are going to set it at the point when we call this function so i'll come back here and add this here and say this display id should actually equal to our settings menu that we get from here so at this point we can just copy this and replace it in these two areas that we do have so up here and down i'll clean this up just a bit to make it easier and i'll remove these settings which we we don't need there it was for demo purposes 
So let's save this, go back and reload. So I'll come here, click to edit this when I choose to go for the top menu. I can actually update this and when I reload we have our home menu and if I change this to the demo menu then we should have this updating. Now that we have our dynamic menu working, in the next video I'm going to show you how to make dynamic colors, adding typography to be affected, how you can change that, all that in the next video. If you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe or share with a friend and let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you and enjoy whatever you're coding.